This is Casey, Five Times with Gods. This morning, we're going to, well, we're going to conclude the, the Hammer Project, as you can see. We're done. By the way, I hope everybody had a nice and festive Thanksgiving. We did. All right, back to business. The Hammer Project will go through each of the five different metals that we have used to uh, uh, produce these hammers. And we'll go through each and every one. We'll show you our, fa our uh, failures and such. We'll start off with uh, the bullet jacket material, which uh, the bullet jackets we got from when we rendered the lead out of them. They were range scrap. Here's what we ended up for a hammer. Not bad. Not bad at all. For uh, a whole bunch of alloy metal put together. You know, if you remember, we all also did a uh, uh, tomahawk out of the same material. This tomahawk, uh, seven pounds, that's a little bit too heavy, but uh, we, we wanted to see if we could do it. And then we did. I don't think I any longer want to mess around with the bullet jacket material. And uh, in that, I think it messes up my crucible. Kind of like zinc does with lead. If you ever have had that, if you have ever had that experience with zinc and lead together, while well, you cert certainly have not lived. All right, enough of this. I'm not going to ever do this ever again unless I have to. Next, we did the bullet brass. Brass that did not make the specs for us. We melt the brass down. Here's uh, our first pour, a failure. Not really a failure, but the handle is not as long as we would like to have it. Here's our second pour with the brass. And the handle, we used the Vietnam Tomahawk handle for the handle form. In that, it's tapered. You can pull it right out. Got lots of draft. Pretty good hammer. Now you'll see right here up close, or part of the tin can is still on there. And I feel that the flux, the borax, <clears throat> probably welded the can to the hammer itself. And I could not get it peeled off. Now, after you do your pour, in order to get that can off of your hammer, I found the best uh, tool to use is the fencing plier, fencing plier tool, where you can peel that can right off of your hammer. Next, copper. First pour, fail. Not bad. Not good. We'll remelt this down. One thing about having a foundry, you can always melt down your mistakes and keep them out of sight. Second pour in copper. We have a hammer with a nice round handle. Here's the form we used for the handle, uh, chrome-plated 
shock absorber. That's what we used. Had good draft on it, it's nice and slick. Nice copper hammer. Okay, now we're back into the aluminum. We have three hammers here, four hammers here. Here's a good failure here. I do not know what happened here. Look at that. The handle was hollow. So, anyway, that's the meltdown. <coughs> Second pour, we did batter. But we still, we have this chingus up here. I don't know what happened with that. But you still got a, a pretty good hammer. Third pour, not bad. We used the tomahawk handle for the handle form. And the fourth pour, we did much better. I really do like this one. It just come out so good. Even though I got the hammer head, on a little bit uh, off center there. My drill, uh, my hole saw must have walked on me. Anyway, aluminum. You know, if we like, I want to tell you about some aluminum. It takes a lot of energy to produce aluminum from bauxite ore. And if we ever lost the power grid for whatever reason, why, there would be no more aluminum produced except what we have already on hand. During World War, during World War II, the Nazis never make a good use of aluminum and it probably extended the war by a while longer in that they were taking the aluminum from our B-17 bombers that they were shooting down and they were using it in their wartime operation productions. You know, you see pictures of them dragging in wing sections with teams of horses. They were using our aluminum against us. We could probably have them quicker. But uh, anyway, you do whatever you can to win whenever you're at war. <clears throat> now, next, we did a hammer and pure soft lead. And I made one of these 40 years ago. Uh, when I, I worked at a tractor shop and I, uh, I worked on the, the two cylinder John Deere tractors. Certain part on the end of the crankshaft had to do with the, the clutch. If you did not get that on there good and tight and indexed the way it came off, why it would get loose and instead of pulling your hand clutch one time you had to pull it twice you could always tell if there was a problem i poured this 40 years ago and i'll show you how i did it take a three quarter inch pipe take a beating can <clears throat> cut your three quarter well uh, one one inch hole <clears throat> It's in the side of the cam. Slide your three quarter inch pipe in there all the way and keep it level. Keep your pipe horizontal and level. 
and then go ahead and pour your lab in. And you got yourself a hammer that you can give your give something a good kerwallop with. All right, now. <clears throat> oh, you know, I want to tell you one more little little uh, thing about aluminum and anasis. I I saw a specimen of uh, wartime production P thirty eight pistol, automatic pistol. That where they were making the grips out of red bakelite, while well, these particular rip grips were made of cast aluminum, just like the bakelite grips, but they were aluminum. <clears throat> and they painted them with that that ugly mustard paint color that they uh, must have got a bargain on paint. But uh, I wish I could see that again and show you. But that's how they utilized our, our equipment that uh, they brought down. Now, I think we're done enough with these hammers. Uh, the hammers are kind of getting a little bit boring. I like uh, making tools and I like especially making weapons. I probably, probably do a little bit better on the hawk. I want to work on that and refine on that. But <clears throat> the next project, I, well, we could, uh, we could do uh, the wedges. We could do an extension on the wedge. If you've worked out the timber and used wedges, why, you probably found that uh, you haven't had a long enough wedge and you have trouble getting the wedge out. I'm thinking that maybe I might want to make this tool here where the wedge won't uh, get stuck in the tree where you cannot pull it out. Well, we're going to try that. And then, how about a, a 105 howitzer shell? with the 50 caliber ground machine gun cartridge on it. We've already done this one in the loop, our first pour. Here's our pattern, 105, head stamp is 1944. This is trench art. You can still find these around, but my idea I would like to try, instead of having the bullet head aluminum, why, I've already got this fixed up where I could use a real 50 caliber bullet projectile on the end of the, of the uh, aluminum ashtray, where I'll just push it down into the flask we pull it out and the bullet will remain captive. I wonder what that's going to look like. <clears throat> We're going to give this a try and see what happens. We'll probably do it tomorrow. Now, I've already, uh, I'll tell you what, let's just do this tomorrow. This is an easy thing that you can do. Well, that will be it for the day. We'll get back with you tomorrow. Thank you for watching.